Today we're going to review the 915, the 12 candle window, and the high and low of the session. Stay tuned traders, this will help tie things together. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Hopefully everybody's had a good start to the week. It's Wednesday, there's already been a couple of days of some big, big movements in the pound crosses. I've received a ton of emails, a ton of questions, a lot of great feedback on YouTube and my, my email as well. I really appreciate all the comments and the likes and again, uh, your input is very valuable to me and I just will continue to try and provide real-time valuable content that will help you improve your trading and your real-time bottom line results in live time. A lot of questions about the 12 candle window. There's a bit of confusion about the three hours and the 915. So there are three hour windows versus the four hour, one hour and 15 minute rollover together. We're gonna help clarify that today. Again, just reviewing our simple strategy. I've just, I'm just gonna simplify it a little bit more today because I think there's a bit of, just been a bit of confusion with a lot of people. We focus at the high and the low of the day. We're gonna talk about this today, the importance of understanding the timings and how they use that first three hours of each market open to either complete a move or to set the ranges for the market to trade off of. <clears throat> So again, round numbers, the behavior of price at those areas, at the high and the low, or the round numbers, stop loss placement and profit targets, a lot of questions about stop losses, and then executing and trade management, and then reviewing your process and your performance, looking to where you can improve upon that and get better, and then scaling that up in size when your results dictate that. So we talk about the high and the low of the day. The first three hours of the day in the rollover. Of course, I, I can't trade that. The spreads widen. It's not inside of my, my trade plan. But when the market opens, if we just simplify things to our three hour window, you'll understand why. If 8 p.m. New York to 11 p.m. New York is the Asian market first three hour window. 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time is the Europe, Asia Close Europe Open into the London Open. And 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time for the New York Open. Now, in that beginning of the day, Asia will trade usually inside of round numbers. Now we're going to go a bit more in depth in that in, an, in one of the next two videos about understanding where Asia opens up in relation to the zeros and fifties and how it, how it handles that. But it's important to understand if you come along for the London session that in that first three hours, Asia, if we call this Asia, they will give us a high and a low. Now, let's say they, they've gone up and in that second three hour window, they've extended that out, but then pulled it back into consolidation. So they're inside of the high and they're inside of the low. As we head into the Asia close and the Europe London open, so now we have our high of the day and we have our low of the day. Now when Europe comes on board, Europe will either move lower down or they will extend the high out. Now again, if we're at double zeros or at 50, these numbers potentially may be where the market works itself in three pushes or if it immediately pulls away for a move back down. Again, in that first 12 candle window of the new market open. But what's important is that if the high and the low from the first three hours of Asia have stayed intact, when Europe comes on board now, we wait for one of those extremes to be tested unless 
at the Europe open, we get an open drive candle off of numbers. If the market has moved into a high or a low at numbers, we will possibly get an open move off the numbers with a pin hammer or an open drive candle for a move back in the opposite direction as Europe opens. So if you think about this, Asia may bring us up high to sell down. But if the market extends out in that second three hours, again, Asia or Europe may bring us down and London might bring us back up. So it's important to understand that each session will establish a high and a low in that first three hour window. Now once they establish that high and that low, if they, if they come back inside, now we wait. Because when we're inside, that traps volume where the stops are on the outside typically, which means your risk is greater on the inside. What we want to see is the market break out again and give us something down low for a move back the other way. And we're not talking about trend trades. We're talking about once the market has established a high and a low in that first three hour window. Now, if it is a trend trade, typically, the market will break through one of these boxes, break through and pull back, meaning the stops are down here and the market will then continue down to the bottom or into the next 50 pip box. But it's important to understand that if the high and the low remain intact in that first three hours of each session, so if Europe and London are inside of Asia's range as they were yesterday, because Asia had extended the range on a couple of the pairs, uh, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, that the high or the low of the day may already be in place. And that is really, really important to understand because if you have that understanding that one of those extremes may be locked in for the day, then you have a bias for heading into the next session, New York, for which direction we want to be looking to trade. So again, if the market has set a high and a low in that first three hours in Asia and not extended it out in that second three hour window as we head into the close, Europe and London then can typically either trade to the extreme to test it, to stop hunt the high or the low, possibly at numbers, and it may not be at numbers. It may be at the high and it may, be, it may break out and pull back. Remember the three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they continue, they trend. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse. They break out, they pull back, and they go into a range-bound market. We'll look at some examples today, but it's really important to understand the, the high and the low in that first three hours of each market session. So it's important to understand that in each session, they may go back and stop hunt profitable trades in the set from the session before Asia may go and stop hunt profitable trades from New York in that in that first three hours when they establish the high and the low that in itself may be a stop hunt back into the previous sessions profitable trades so when Europe and London open up if they open up inside of a high and a low they may jam traders up into the wrong direction before they shift it into the trend direction that they want to move the market. So again, if Europe and London are inside of a high and a low, the high and the low in that three hour window in our 12 candle window can then become the extremes, okay? So they may, they may jam us up inside a high and a low and then hit one side and then shift it. Or they may hit both and then shift it back the other way. But again, price behavior at those levels, we want to see an engulfment or pin hammers after the stop hunt. So we want to see those boundaries broken and a reversal take place versus a breakout, a breakout, a consolidation and a continuation. There's a big difference, but again, we're going to go through some examples today on the charts. So when you have that take place, you have a one bar stop. A lot of questions, what is a one bar stop? Wherever you enter in, once you've got confirmation, fight for the best fill price. You may have to limit order or you may uh, market order 
a price that covers your spread when it comes back into that zone. You will get you will get a retest in most cases. You place your stop at the extreme. If it's a large stop, just adjust your position size accordingly. And profit targets. You can set it for the numbers for 50 pips. In some cases, there may be a measured move taking place of 100 or more pips as we've had in the last couple sessions with Pound New Zealand, Pound Aussie, Pound and Pound Swiss. Okay, so you need to be cognizant of just calmly placing your order in the market and your stop, setting your profit targets and letting the market do its job. If that is the extreme for the session, nothing you can do by sitting at the screen or moving your stop to break even or anything else. If, that is a, if the trade is right, it's going to move to your profit target with no problems at all. If after an hour you haven't seen an indication of that trade moving into profit, I would reassess that trade and either move your positions to break even or if indeed you feel like you can see price action going against you, exit the trade, cut your losses before they become bigger. And then review the trade. What did you do well? What could you have done better? Focus on your strengths. I've had a lot of questions about price behavior. If you're not sure what price looks like, Print off your charts each day and circle the high and the low of the day and look at those. Start drawing lines at the highs and lows for each session to see what happens when they're violated. That's the price behavior that you need to start to study and learn. There'll often be pins. There's, there'll be pins when the market reverses. There'll be engulfments. If you're not sure what an engulfment is, it's when one candle closes beyond the extreme of, of another at a high or at a low or in that vicinity and usually that will be happening at round numbers. Very important. So you need to start printing these off and reviewing each day what happened throughout the trading session. It's specifically in those three hour windows. Now just to clear up any confusion, the 915 okay for the most part coincides with each one of these sessions so if you come to the screen at 2 a 2 a.m. New York now again if the market in Asia has gone into consolidation in that second three hours and stayed at the at the high or at the low and at numbers typically that market will tend to move in that last hour of Asia sometimes at 1 a.m. Okay, that is also the rollover of our four hour and one hour and 15 minute charts coinciding when, especially when it's at the end or the beginning of that hour. Now, typically, if that's the case and there's already a trade in play, then you should have a bias for the direction you're going to enter in Europe. So, if the market has already moved and it's come off of a consolidation for a 50 or 100 or 150 pip trade, you should already have a bias and a way to enter in that market either on a, an engulfment or an, or an open drive pin hammer at the Europe Open or London Open. Uh, there was a great one on the pound yen last week um, where the market moved at the end of Asia and the London Open gave a, an open drive pin hammer at 50s for a 50 pip move up which was halfway through the move. And again same thing in New York in that last hour of our four hour window before they roll over together at nine, often a lot of those trades will take place at the end of that first hour in our 12 candle window in the New York session. Really important to understand that. And then in some cases it may be the second hour of New York because the first hour of that four hour window is a trap taking traders in the wrong direction before it reverses to move in the, the intended direction of the market. So really important, print your charts off, study that, M pay attention again to that three hour window, the 12 candles, the high and the low, especially when you head into the, each session from the session before, very important. We'll look at some examples. Again, thank you for all the feedback. Keep it simple traders, stay focused, stay disciplined. Have a great trading day and may the markets go with you. G'day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Just continuing our discussion on the high and low of the day and the three hour opening
window of the equity market opens and just looking at the 9415 but just important to know it doesn't matter which pair we pick we'll pick the pound the blue is the first three hours of asia the pink is the three hours of the europe london window and the yellow is the three hour opening window of the new york markets and again that's the one hour prior to the market open the one hour of the market open and the one hour after the market opened and i just want to paint the picture so everybody understands a bit clear that the 12 candle window is one of two things so first of all when the market opens the market as we get to the end of that three hour window will have given us a high and a low now in the next three hours of the a asian window as in this particular case we can see that the market has extended the low before pulling back inside and then heading into the Europe London Open, we are back inside of the high and low. So again, not only the high of the day, but the high of our anchor point high and low of our box high and low. So we've, we've obviously got a high and a low of the previous day, but we have highs and lows heading into the session and then a high and low of the day. But what I want people to understand is that in that three hour window, Asia will give us a high and a low. Now, if they extend that out, which they have in this case, but they've pulled it back in prior to the last hour of the close, and then heading into the Europe Open, you can see we break into the next 100 pip box, break out, pull back into the London Open for a 50 plus move up, which again, if we look to our left, we can see there are stops above these previous swing highs from the New York session as well as from the London session but again we head into the Europe London open and in that session in that three hour window the market gives us a new high and then a swing low a new high and a swing low so each session in that three hour window will usually have a high and a low and in this particular case, there was a breakout and a continuation, a breakout and a continuation. And then as we headed into the New York session, the market consolidated inside of a peak formation in that hour prior to the market opening. So we have a pullback that occurs just prior to New York opening. So these first four candles is the hour prior to the New York open that stop hunts the most recent swing low as well as the swing low from the london session so again just in simple terms okay we we obviously took out the last high prior to the session it pulled back into consolidation and then stop hunted back into the trend the market extended itself out so when europe and london painted their high and low the next three hour window extended that high even further heading into the New York open. Then the market goes back into consolidation. Asia opens, gives us a low of the day and then a high of the day before pulling back into consolidation and towards the end of the Asian session breaks out to stop on traders who are short from the previous New York session, hitting the stops into the Europe London open, at which point they in golf so we have first hour and then in the last candle of the first hour we have an engulfment that stop hunts back down to the low of the asian session where traders would have had stops that were either off the first swing long or the second swing long through the top now we have a high and a low from the europe london session just fix this so we have stops above okay we have stops below and then the market goes into consolidation into the u.s session hits the stops up high hits them down low pulls back and then one two three to the high before consolidating at the numbers at the high of the day before pulling back 50 pips back inside of the range so again new york takes out the london high so stop on high, inside bar, consolidation at round numbers, 
Traders could have fought for the best fill once they had the inside bar. They could have got filled at the numbers, placed their stop above the pin high for a 50 pip or more target back inside of the range. The market then goes back into consolidation. There's a swing high. We have a low of the day in place. Again, that three hour window, Asia has given us a high and a low. And then in the second three hour window, towards the close of Asia, hit that high one more time before pulling back and then breaking down below the 50 pip into the lower 50 pip box into the Europe open, which continues that move. It extends the low of the day out to the previous day's low at numbers and gives us a little pin hammer at the very low at the very last second last candle of the third hour in our Europe London window. So now we have our Europe high and low once this market breaks back inside and then stop hunts back to the high of the day. It pulls back into consolidation into the New York open. Stop hunts traders that are short gives us a pullback, a little final second grab for the money and then a stop hunt back inside of the range before going into consolidation. Again, Monday, the market gives us a low of the day as we head into Asia and then pins the high, pulls back, but into the third, fourth, fifth hours of the Asian session, we take out the high and extend that high out. So in that first three hour window, we have a high and a low, but then the market extends it out into the Europe open. Europe pins up to the 50, pulls back inside. In our three hour window, we now have a low of the day and a high of the day. One push, two push, three pushes back up to the numbers, three pins, pulls back. Stop hunts traders that are short into the New York open. A little pin hammer for a stop hunt back to the numbers at the New York open. So again, each equities three hour opening window will give a high and a low. Now, what happens in that next three hour window, that market can extend out even further to a new high or a new low. It may be at numbers or it may exhaust itself at a previous high or low before pulling back into consolidation. Now, when that happens and we're at the open of an equities market, we may have a 50 pip or more move back into the existing trend. If it's consolidated and pulled back already, we may have an equities market opening that extends the move out for 50 pips or more. Again, we just look at the next window. We see a high in place in Asia. They give us a low, which gets extended out in that next three hour window, uh, extends it out. They pull back just prior to the Europe open, one, two, three down, taking out the low of the day, consolidating into the last candle of the equities, or sorry, the um, first hour of the 12 candle window. London opens on a big engulfment, a four bar engulfment candle for a 50 pip move up. They extend it out again with one more push after the 12 candle window, and then extend it one push two more times to the peak, pin hammer, pull it back inside of the double zero box into the New York open, pin the high one more time before dropping that down 75 pips back into the Europe session. So hopefully that makes sense traders. Again, paying attention to that first three hour window, we have highs and lows in place, but also that 915 is the time frames when the four hour, the one hour and the 15 minute all roll around together. And often they will coincide very closely with these highs and lows and moves back in the opposite direction. Stay disciplined traders, stay focused. Thank you for all your feedback and comments. Have a great trading day and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.